The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to the Sicilian Corner, winner of the Italian Heritage Media Award, with your hosts, Tom Zappala and Mike Lamazzo. Mikey, good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, how are you, buddy? Two, this, beautiful, two beautiful women in between I feel <laughs> two not too good looking guys. We, we're the bookends. <laughs> Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Welcome, everybody. No, this is a treat. I know. This is a treat. Say in Carter, Tom Zappala, Mike Lamazzo. We have a special show today. Uh, in the house with us is the owner, the better half, and the much prettier better half. And cheerleader. And cheerleader of Grazi Restaurant, uh, Cindy. Good morning. How, How are, are you? Cindy Clinton. Very good. And our dear friend, Marianne Esposito. Ciao. 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 Uh, and the reason uh, we've asked them both to be here is because there's a special event coming up uh, this coming Sunday, mm-hmm. but we're going to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share the show with your friends. Uh, you can watch us on Facebook, YouTube, uh, listen to us anywhere that you listen to your favorite podcast. You can ask Alexa, I want to play the uh, Sicilian Corner. She'll do it, Pandora, whatever you want to do. And you can either comment here or leave us a message at zap, Z-A-P-S-R, senior at hotmail.com. You can uh, email us. Uh, you can email Mike at... <laughs> Gama Sigama. No, Mikey, come on. What is it? It's M. Lamazzo at... No, yours is enough, Tom. M- I, I like the way you do. All right, all right. We won't give Mikey's up. I Mike, just want Mike. to say we're on 16 different video podcast platforms now. 16. That's amazing. Throughout the world. I mean... That's great. Wow. Even That's in incredible. Italy, right? Yeah. No, oh, good. Yeah. Okay. We have people, we had somebody from Australia oh, writing in the other day. Uh-huh. I mean, it's amazing. Actually, it's, we do have a lot mm, of Thanks, we, Mom. <laughs> we do have a lot of viewers from Italy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, from yeah. I would from imagine. Sicily. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We do. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, and a lot of uh, viewers from New York City. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, good. Thanks to me, Mikey. Thanks to you? Yeah. Because I, I, I knew what groups to reach out no, to. No, no, no. Right. Their neighbors are yours in Florida, the old age home. The only, the right. only group that Mike has reached out to regarding this show is the Wyndham Knights of Columbus. <laughs> I right. like the Knights of Columbus. They're a good yeah. group. Yeah. Are they? Very, very anyway, active. Uh, so we have a great show. Uh, this coming uh, Sunday, mm. uh, Marianne, uh, everybody knows Marianne Esposito, is going to be doing a book signing at Grazi Restaurant at what time? One, One to three. three. One to three o'clock. Uh, her new book, Ciao Italia, which I just bought three copies, uh, one for myself and Ellen. You and know, Tom, that's a great idea because with Christmas coming, no, yes, yes. with Christmas coming, they make a beautiful, so beautiful. So where's your check and why didn't you buy a book? Because I'm going to get mine when I go to uh, have lunch <laughs> at over. The, at, the, at the book sign. At, at, at Grazi's. Okay. Yeah. That's and my apologies for not being there on Sunday, but I had to make a decision between being there or going to my son, my grandson's basketball game, who begged me. So we're going to go to my. Oh, that's more bas- important. We're going to go to his basketball. Yes. He's yes. he's nine years old. Yes, you've got to be and there. Got to be there oh, for that. That's great. Where, uh, Cindy, whereabouts uh, will will uh, Miriam be set up? So she'll be set up in the restaurant, towards the back of the restaurant. We have an, an area we call the Cove. Um, so we're going to kind of set it up so that people can come in, greet Marian. Get a book, and then mm-hmm. either stay and have lunch. Yeah. And if you'd like oh. to do that, I would recommend a reservation. Well, c- yeah, I was going to say uh-huh. that they should. I yeah. mean, it's going to be pretty packed. I would suggest you know you don't have to have big, a big dinner. You can go have lunch. They have phenomenal pizza. Boy, that pizza! Let me. Pizza is incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It really is. I know. I, I've heard. I've heard the story and the pedigree <laughs> about the oven a few yeah. times from your yeah. husband. Mm-hmm. But boy. Yeah. Oof, that's right, authentic. So, so have lunch. Mm-hmm. Uh, Meet Marianne, meet and greet. Uh, you'll sign the books. Absolutely. You know, sign the books. Yeah. And uh, this book, I'll tell you what. You know, when, when I was, uh, we were very fortunate. Uh, Marianne was on the show with us uh, before the book came right. out yeah. with mm-hmm. the, the publisher, yep. uh, Deirdre from uh, Peter Randall Publishers. Mm-hmm. And she brought an advanced copy. And I started thumbing through the book and I said, man, this is a home run. Just, no, it really is, and I'll tell you why. This is not your regular, run-of-the-mill Italian cookbook. And not that your other ones were either, but yeah. point being is that this specializes... No meat. 
This there's a few no, meat. meat in there. I know, there's a few <laughs> meat, but it's not focused. It's, no. it's, the focus no. is on herbs and vegetables. Yes. Vegetables. And the recipes in this book are killers. There, there's some great recipes. That's why I bought the book because Ellen and I. Uh, Ellen loves. We we cook with a lot of vegetables. Like this, there's the uh, the the uh, radish. What is it? The uh, roasted radish. Roasted radish. Radishes. You know we have we eat a lot of radishes, right. but. Like this, do this, you really? Oh God, wow, that yes. sounds that's good. That's one that I, I, <laughs> yeah, I don't really get into radishes. <laughs> roasted I don't know radishes, them ro roasted with a little balsamic vinegar. They're delicious. They're, they're fantastic. They're delicious. They're like candy. They're, they're sounds really, really good. Uh, really good. But yeah. no filling. I love roasted no. vegetables. It's candy with no yes. filling. Yes, yeah. roasted right. vegetables right. are phenomenal. I love phenomenal. roasted vegetables. Yeah. They Delicious. really are. Roasted vegetables. I made some last night for dinner, actually. Yeah. You know something? I'll get an eggplant. Not radishes, but. Cut it in half, quarter it, <laughs> mm -hmm. get some zucchini, yeah. some summer squash. Put that down a little, on the tray. Spritzle it over with a little bit of extra EVO. Yeah. Shove it in the oven. Throw it in the oven at 325. Right. Let it cook for 55 minutes. Yeah. Me, forget about it. I'm yeah. in seventh heaven. Yeah, right. And, and I love healthy. it. I, I make a meal out of it. Yeah, and it's I healthy. Make a meal out it's healthy. It. Mary, I really like it. Do you do much with finocchio with anise? Fennel, yes, absolutely. It's very hard to grow, though. It is in New Hampshire. You know why? In you New need, Hampshire, you need a lot of rain. <laughs> you need a lot of water, and we've done it, you know, several times in the in the garden. But they, the bulbs are small. They are. You know, they should be they should be big, and they they need a lot of heat to develop that anise taste. This, hard to do in New Hampshire, so that's one we get. Growing up, Mike, I don't know market. how you were, but it growing like grow after after a meal, after a meal, yeah. growing up, it was a yeah, a, a digest holiday. it was a digest. It was yeah. it was a little of everything. We always had a couple of cut up, yeah. and everybody they were in the middle of the table after it a would Christmas disappear. dinner, mm -hmm. and people we would eat them as kind of like a, as as you said, it's kind of like an cleanses uh, your palate, cleanse your palate. Mm -hmm. Just it was it was a nice ending to a to a yes. great meal right before yeah. dessert right yes yes, yes. just it, fantastic it's still done so the name of your book seed plant and no. cook Mikey will you please do your homework <laughs> it's it's Charlie right here the other plant, plant harvest, harvest and cook. cook all right all right <laughs> I look at what's this. wrong with you <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're killing me but. Anyway, Guy, your husband. Yes, Guy Tano. He's the connoisseur. He's the garden person. He's the garden person. And does he start seeds like the let's say the end of March? Do you start seedlings? From yes. Seed? We start in the basement. I tell you all this in the book because this is claim. I don't of, have the book yet. You haven't given me a copy. But this is a dual purpose book. This is a cookbook, but it's if you want to plant vegetables, it, it's a guide to how to plant that's, vegetables. That's why we. That's what Very I like simply. about the book. Very simply, it's, you don't have to have a special degree in order to do this. But even if you don't have a plot of land where you're going to plant anything, I tell you, you know, in Italy, if you are in a city, you live in a city, look up. Look up on the balconies. What do you see? Pots with herbs, you're with right. tomatoes, right. with fig trees, with olives. So you can do container gardening. And even if you don't like that, you could become a member of a community garden. That's very big right now, where you know you take part in a community garden, you have your little plot, you plant what you like, or go to your farmers market, support yeah. your farmers market. Or if all of that is not appealing to you, you can go to the grocery store. You know, Cindy, Marianne, uh, the trend right now in the Boston metro area is for yeah. a lot of these larger complexes. Yeah. They're planting gardens on their rooftop. On roof. That's rooftop right. Gardens. Yeah. That's exactly and it's right. And they're communities. They're yeah. community gardens. That's what it's I'm amazing. Saying. What right. grows. Right. And another thing about I love about the city of Boston, especially if I'm going to a ball game, I make sure that I go by the Victory Gardens and I walk around through the Victory Gardens. Yeah. And the people are so proud of what they're growing. Yes. And there's every nationality mm -hmm. in the world they're talking. Mm -hmm. Whether they be Vietnamese, mm -hmm. whether they be Italian, yeah. German, or whatever, mm -hmm. they're growing this. But you can yeah. tell the Italians because they have the grape baba. <laughs> and they're sitting, drinking a glass of wine in a chair that's about 120 years old. Watching the but, plants grow. But the, the people are so, you ask them a question, yeah. they love it. Oh, yeah. They love it. They mm -hmm. love to tell you what they're growing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you've got the muddy river right there, so they're getting the water from the river. Yeah. And you mentioned about water at, uh, on, your, on your property. Can't yes. you tie into the Oyster uh, River? 
Can't you guys well, put you, a generator and you, just... You really wouldn't want to do that because that's salt brackish. water. It's brackish. It's brackish. It's salt. Oh, it's where it's, you are it is? Yeah, because that feeds into oh, Little okay. Bay. Oh, okay. I so didn't realize. I yeah. Re what I tell you in the book is if you're thinking about planting a garden, you need to think about several things. Number one, where is it going to be placed? You need six to eight hours of sun every day. Where's your water source? You don't want to be putting something where it's sunny, but the water source is back at your house, and you've got to walk back and forth with buckets See, that's, of water. See, that's why we, we yeah, <laughs> Ellen. Uh, Are you uh, brackish too? Are you? Ellen? Oh God, yeah. But no we kidding. Can, yeah, we can't use the river because it's partly salt, salt water. water. It's right, right yeah. near the when ocean. When the tide comes in. Our out. All the time. Oh yeah. Really? Yeah, it's brackish. Mm -hmm. How many miles are you from the uh, ocean? Mi mile. Mile, maybe a mile and a quarter to the rocks. To Newburyport. Hmm. Wow. Right, right around the bend. Yeah. Right around the bend. At the, at the mouth, right, right by the bridge. Yeah. I have a question. We're talking about rivers, Marianne. Uh, I know in, nothing about rivers. <laughs> you know about this one. What? All right. In your shows in the past, yeah. I know you've changed locations where you're filming now. Yeah. And you're right here in Salem, New Hampshire. Yes. Right at the Scuola Culinaria. Say it again. I want to hear it. La Scuola Culinaria. I love it. That's cool. Yeah. It just rolls right off yeah. your tongue. La Scuola Culinaria. Nice. That means the cooking school. Well, my, my point to it, uh, <laughs> when your producer, director, yeah. uh, Paul. Paul Lally, uh -huh. was re doing the filming, yeah. um, you would show in the kitchen a view of your window, kitchen window, yep. and it showed the river. River behind. Was that a real picture, or was that a film, or was no, it a that painting? Was, that was real. Oh, it yeah. never changed. I, I yeah. told Lucille, I says, you know something? That's not, I said, they, get, they must have a painting there or something. No, 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 that's the real thing. Really? Yes, Mikey. Oh, do you miss being out of the house a little bit? Um, do I miss being out of the house? Working out of the kitchen in your house? Yes, yeah. but no, because do you know what it's like to film in a kitchen? It, I have no idea. It's, it's cables, it's people, it's lights, it's, it's gels, it's everything. And know? I think you told me in the past that you would film three shows. Three shows a day. That, freaking believe That would be nine recipes. Wow. Yeah, that, that was a mental exercise. That, uh -huh. men that was a mental exercise because, you know, it, it, TV is – I don't think people really understand that, you know, if you do a cooking show – you cannot, at least I cannot, read off of a monitor and cook. I know a lot of cooking shows are like that, where they have a monitor. You're reading what you're saying, and you're trying to cook. That, to me, is impossible. So you do it with no No, no script. script. No. You've you got to know what you're doing. Cindy, do you cook? Do you like to cook? No, that's why I bought a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> And a damn good one at that, let yeah, me tell you. Very good, Cindy. <laughs> no, unfortunately, I did not develop Cindy, any want, good cooking I, skills. I want you to tell our listening audience about your new chef. My new chef, Oscar Figueroa, is outstanding. He is doing some really great things. He's making some really good specials. We have... Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> My what? bad. Cueing Mikey and... Oh, and, uh, sorry. I thought you were... That's okay. No, no. no. You're doing fine. Uh, so he has a lazy lobster that he's come up with a special mm. and a chicken masala. Mm. <clears throat> and both incredible dishes. The chicken masala is going to go on the menu mm -hmm. at some point down the mm. road, um, not too far in the future. Mm. But the customers have been raving about his food. They love oh, him. Good. He's a great guy. Mm. Outstanding. Very interactive What's the lazy with the customers. lobster like? <clears throat> it's in the shell still, but all oh. the meat is accessible, so you don't have any You're cracking not struggling. to do. Struggling, yeah. Oh, There's no I love cracking it. Yeah. at all. You take no a fork. No dirty in and the shirt. <laughs> no, not at all. So, delicious. Mm. Very nice. Yeah. All right, let's get back to the book. Um, a couple of things. A couple of questions yeah. I have. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about sun. Yes. And climate. Yes. Based on where we live. Yeah. In Zone New five. Is how difficult is it to grow vegetables in the climate as opposed to down south? I mean, it, it's oh, all oh, big difference night because night. the south is you know like maybe six weeks ahead of us. So while we're planting lettuce when the last frost has gone by, and that can be anywhere between you know the middle of May to the end of May, they've already harvested lettuce in Georgia, Tennessee, Florida, all of those places where you know it's sunny and warm. So I tell you that this book was written because I live in zone five. That's the zone I live in, and the, and the recipes in this book are particular to zone five. So, so let me ask you this question. 
living. So we're all in zone five. Yeah, you're all in zone five. New England, New England. So so based on the the, the concept of zone five. Yeah. You mentioned uh, fennel, very difficult to grow. Yes, yes. Are there, what are some of the other vegetables that are either very difficult or next to impossible to grow up here in Zone 5? Well, one of them is in this book. And I had to kiss my husband Guy 50 times when I saw that he grew this because it's this. Artichokes? An artichoke. Really? Yeah, see the artichoke? Wow. Beautiful. This is a globe artichoke with side uh, baby shoots here. Now, you got to call up Mother Nature if you're going to grow artichokes, and you say, I need about 50 days where the temperatures are pretty stable, around 55 degrees, in order to get artichokes. Interesting. Well, that's a tall order, because we all know what Mother Nature is like in New England, right? They're unpredictable. So what we did was we planted them from seedlings, not from seeds. We planted the artichokes from seedlings. Then we covered them with reme, which is like a gauze-like material, which allows sunlight in and rain, Mm -hmm. water, so that, you know, it's getting sunlight, it's getting moisture, but it's not getting bugs on it or some little creature that can eat them. And it kept it warm as well. So by July, the middle of July, we had artichokes. So uh, it needs sun. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, all plants Plenty of need sun. Time. You need six to eight hours each day. So, I mean, something like that, could you grow indoors with artificial no. light? No. No shot. No. Uh, Tommy, I just no. want to add, in Italy, you go to the farmer's market, yeah. and I think you'll agree with me. Yeah. A lot of times, the artichokes are sold the whole plant. That's right. You take the whole, f- <laughs> the plant, whole with plant. you. you got this four, three, yeah, four, right. four. Beautiful. It's a beautiful plant. Uh, it it's, really is. It really is, yeah. and it's a member of the thistle family. Because if you mm-hmm. let a if you let an artichoke go to seed, you're going to get this purple thistle. So it, it belongs to the thistle family. And actually, when you were saying about artichokes in Rome, or, uh, in Italy, in Rome, the most popular way to do these artichokes is to take the whole thing, the whole thing, you plop it in boiling oil, and it the flower the leaves open up like a, a flower, and they're crispy. And they eat them with olive oil and salt. That's it. The whole thing. The Very whole cool. Plant. The whole thing. Wow. The name of the book is Ciao Italia, Plant, Harvest, and Cook. We're going to take a quick break. We come back. We're going to get into the, the depth the depth of the book. Hang in there. We'll be right back. Ciao. This is Esther of You, Me, and Sicily. I want to talk to you about Tommy Amin and the great staff at Butcher Boy Market. Families, foodies, and home chefs come together at Butcher Boy to talk good food and create traditions. They offer the best in quality cuts of beef, pork, lamb, poultry, and restaurant-style steaks and chops. Produce? All of their produce is hand-selected to complement any meal or even to make it your main course. Their deli serves fresh roast beef, turkey, and beautiful imported Italian cold cuts, cheeses, and antipasto. And don't forget the Butcher Boy Bakery, featuring sweet delectables from all over the state, as well as their very own bakery. That's Butcher Boy, where the secret to a great steak is, of course, the steak. Located at 1077 Oscott Street in North Andover, Massachusetts, in the Butcher Boy Plaza. Ciao! Looking for that something special? All of us here at the Sicilian Corner suggest trying Ristorante Uno, located at 119 Salem Street in Boston's historic North End. For the most exquisite dining experience in an intimate setting that serves authentic regional Italian cuisine and features old country service, try Ristorante Uno. Did we mention their award-winning wine cellar? Ristorante Uno, 119 Salem Street in Boston's historic North End. Call 617-573-9406 for reservations. That's 617-573-9406. Tell them the boys from the Sicilian Corner sent you. Today. 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 Today, Lawrence General Hospital has affiliations with leading Boston academic medical centers, top specialists from Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center and Floating Hospital for Children at Tufts Medical Center, work with our local doctors to bring world-class care close to home. Today, amazing partnerships are happening at Lawrence General Hospital. To learn more, visit lawrencegeneral.org slash today. 
Italian artisan cuisine combines simple fresh ingredients with time-honored preparation to create an incredible culinary experience. At Tuscan Kitchen, located in Salem's historic depot district, talented chefs prepare everything in-house from scratch for all to see. Guests enjoy their meal literally in our kitchen as food is prepared right in front of you. Wood ovens burn from morning till night, roasting vegetables, baking bread, and firing delightful thin crust pizzas. Prime steaks are seared on a wood grill. A rotisserie slowly roasts marinated whole chickens and lamb while a pasta maker creates fresh fettuccine. More than just artisan cuisine, Tuscan Kitchen features the wine bar, live entertainment, weekly wine tastings, and elegant private dining and event space. Call 603-952-4875 or visit TuscanKitchen.com to make a reservation and learn more about the culinary adventure that awaits. In Italy, cooking is an art form. Tuscan Kitchen. Experience artisan Italian. Essex Orthopedics and Optima Sports Medicine is pleased to announce the opening of their American College of Radiology accredited MRI unit at their location at 16 Pelham Road in Salem, New Hampshire. So now, in addition to receiving the best orthopedic care in the Merrimack Valley, as well as physical and occupational therapy at Optima Sports Therapy and Rehab, you can also have your MRI all in one convenient location. The doctors and staff of Essex Orthopedics and Optima Sports Medicine have been dedicated to providing outstanding medical care to the Merrimack Valley in southern New Hampshire since 1984. Located on Route 97, just off exit 2 from Route 93 North, on the second floor of the Workout Club of Salem. You deserve the best care, and that's exactly what you'll get from the board-certified surgeons at Essex Orthopedics and Optima Sports Medicine. Please call 603-898-2244 to schedule an appointment. A loyal sponsor for the Sicilian Corner is Hilton Oil Company. Hilton Oil has been located right across from the South Lawrence Common since 1932 at 101 South Union Street. Hilton Oil Company specializes in 24-hour burner service, oil deliveries, including automatic deliveries serving all the Merrimack Valley area, plus portions of southern New Hampshire. If you want your car fixed right the first time, bring it to Hilton's state-of-the-art service station. Remember, Hilton's is also a mass state inspection station. Hilton Oil Company, 101 South Union Street in Lawrence. Call 978-687-9793. This is Cindy and Mike Kunsla, owners and operators of Four Oaks Country Club and Grazia Italian Restaurant in Drakeett, Massachusetts. Grazia Italian Restaurant is the hidden gem of the Merrimack Valley. Why is that? In addition to the spectacular views overlooking the golf course, we have an incredible new chef, Oscar Figueroa. We still have all the favorites, but Oscar has created a lot of excitement with his new specials. Scallops, see it to perfection. House-made ravioli with farm fresh local corn buttery, tender, lazy man's lobster, just to name a few. You have to come experience Grazi Italian Restaurant for yourself. Grazi Italian Restaurant, located at Four Oaks Country Club, 80 Meadow Creek Drive in Drake, Massachusetts. Hope, Hope to, to see you, you soon. soon. Okay, we are back. We are chatting with Marianne Esposito, author, TV personality, and Cindy Kunzler from Grazi Restaurant. Marianne, I have a question. Yeah. Um... Stuffed peppers. Yes. I saw your recipe for stuffed peppers. They're upside down peppers? Yes. One, I mean, I, I just, they're wonderful. They look fantastic. Yeah, uh, we bake them upside down. My mom used to do that. So I thought she was crazy. But she would stuff them, whatever stuffing she was using. This one has some meat stuffing. And then they were packed pretty well. So she'd flip them over, put them in a pan with the olive oil, a little tomato sauce, and cover them, bake them. I said, why are you doing them upside down? This yeah. is crazy. She's because it keeps them moist. They don't dry out. You know, if you, if you have them... I love stuffed up, peppers. Right, right side up. You, the give heat. Me, you give me some stuffed red peppers? Oh. Yeah, I'm in <laughs> some of them. Okay, you're going to make those for I, me, Oh, right? are you kidding? Yeah, okay. You make those for Mikey. I, you know, and the other, the other question I had was, um, can you cut corners? Like, I'm looking at this um, onion, potato, and pumpkin seed focaccia. Yeah. All right, now... I'm lazy. Okay. Can I do, can I, is, is it kosher to make this but use store-bought dough? Oh, boy. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> we got to talk. You got a few minutes. Does that mean no? <laughs> I take that as a no. <laughs> you can do it. No, that's, that's fine. If you want to use store-bought dough, I understand people have limited time. Exactly. I mean, it's better if you make the dough, but... There are a lot of good store-bought doughs. Okay, out there. so that was my next yeah, question. You Michael, you may answer this. 
If I want to get good store bought dough, should I go to a place like Tripoli's? And- Absolutely. Okay. Oh. And use theirs. Mm-hmm. Where is Tripoli? In Lawrence. Lawrence. Oh. You were in there when we did. I was? Yeah, in 2010, <laughs> in September, when you came down to film oh. the uh, feast. The Sicilian oh, Pizza. Right, right. right. I set right. up the so, interview. And a bakery. You Tripoli. love the bakeries. Yes. You met Rosario's son, yeah. Matt. I need to do that again. Yeah, that was a yeah. great. Uh, so we I got so, the 100th coming up this I year. Know. So I their know. dough is, okay, so that's yes, good to know. Yes, use their dough. But if you want to make dough, you know, it's always a nice, it's a very meditative process to make dough. And guess what? You can make dough in a food processor in three minutes. You know? Yeah, that's, that's you all know, it takes. But then you have to let it rise. You got to let it well, sit. Well, yeah, you let it rise. But you, I mean, you, can do, you can do something else while it's rising. True. Right? True. And, True. and then you just punch it down, put your toppings on. The reason this recipe is in the book is because of the onions that we grow. So these caramelized onions. So I tell you about caramelizing the onions, red onions, because they have a much sweeter flavor. So we grow those. And they're similar to the onions that come from Calabria. The uh, the onions from uh, Tropeo, they're very, very, very popular, and they're very tasty. So whenever I see those in Italy, I you know I, I say, oh, I wish I could bring those home. I wish I could bring those onions home, but you can't. You know, you can bring the seeds. Yeah, onions are very, very good. I mean, they yeah. add so much flavor. The onions that used to come from Africa we, were very difficult to get for years. You know what the name of those were? My father-in-law uh, used to always tell me. From, from Africa. Africa. Yeah. Are you talking about? I I'm talking, I, I love Vidalia onions. Vidalia onions are wonderful. No, those are, local, those are but southern. These, these yeah, were a special onions. onion that came out a yeah. certain time of the year, oh, and I they came from Africa, Africa oh. and they were hot to find. But uh-huh. he used to get them. Me, you'd think he was carrying gold. Yeah. And he just loved them. Yeah. And he loved to cook. I think the thing that's really hard to get that's good is garlic, because, you know, 90% of the garlic that we buy in a grocery store comes from China. Most of the garlic comes from China. Really? I thought the yeah. garlic capital in the United States was in California. It is. The garlic capital is in Castor. Yeah. Uh, near Castor I mean, Bill. they have garlic. Yep. But they, have a, they, they have, so ga- they have festivals. when it's from China and when it's... Well, it's yeah. u- it's usually labeled, you know, in your grocery store has it labeled as to where it's where it's coming but from. You but you can get the California but garlic. You can get the ga- from Gilroy. Yeah. That's where they have the festival. They have uh, the- you can get it, but I mean... Where do you get it? You either send away for it, or you you're lucky to find a place. That I sells use garlic it. powder. <laughs> oh my! Don't God. even talk. Don't Just even. Kidding. Don't even. Don't even talk to Wait, him. Wait, I'm Just not a cook, kidding. and even I use fresh garlic. Oh my God! Good Just for you, kidding. girl. I wish you. So, how can you tell? When a garlic is fresh and when it's not fresh. You can tell, first of all, it should feel very hard in your hand, and there should be no cracks, and none of the... peeling off. Right, and none of the paper should be separated. It should be just a hard, solid knob. No cracks in the knob at all. not soft. And not... Oh, no. Interesting. And if it has any sprouts coming out of it, you know, that's that's, that's old garlic. Marianne, why... Develop in the refrigerator. Yeah. (laughs) Why do people get so much money for cooking zucchini flowers? When you fry the zucchini flour, what makes them that expensive? I, it drives me crazy. Well, first of all, they're very delicate, and uh-huh. if you, you know, if you if you have a garden and you have zucchini, you, zucchini plants, like all plants, have to be pollinated, male and female. So you pick too many of those those flowers, you you run the risk of not having the pollination, and there then you have less zucchini, which is probably a good thing for most people because you know we all know how much zucchini grows in the garden, but it's a very delicate thing, and so you have to treat it very delicately. The petals, so, you gotta you gotta take out the little pistil that's in the center, then you gotta put. So the it's pit. labor intensive. It's labor intensive. You can either fill them and then bake them, and there are recipes for that on our our, our website, or you can batter fry them. So I usually do flour, sparkling water. That's, how we, that's what I do. Par sparkling water and salt. You make a batter like a pancake batter. Tommy, you do those? And you, well, you toss. know what I do though. I do. I, we cut them and I, I we have them on pasta. Yeah, that's they're great on I, pasta. We're talking just the flour now. Now the flour. Yes. Yeah, yes. The yeah. flour. He's and talking flour. Yeah, we've done that in the past with just the flour on pasta. Mm-hmm. Really? Oh wow, yeah. yeah. Your mom did that. My mother did that mm-hmm. a ton. Yeah. A ton. No, but they're 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 a delicacy, and people love them. And in restaurants, especially, I don't know if your restaurant serves. Uh, we do. The, yeah, we do. Yeah. When the when they're in season. Yeah, when they're in season. Yeah. Cindy, who does the, the who does I've the had. buying? I'm sorry. I was just about to say that's the only time I've actually had them was at Grazia, and they were incredible. Mm. Thank you. Who does like does Oscar do the the purchasing for for the product? So it's a joint effort. So we have an executive chef that runs all of our events. James Holloway, okay. and he's incredible too, by the way. People come to our events and they say that they felt like they've dined at a restaurant, yeah. not at a banquet. Yes, yes. So it's a big compliment. That's nice. <clears throat> so he, he's been with us for a long time. 
Oscar has only been with us for a couple months now, um, so he's still getting involved in the processes, but he does some, some of the ordering, but James does the bulk of the ordering. Interesting, because I've always wondered, a really good quality restaurant, where do they buy their stuff? You know, I mean, they must have a lot of different sources depending on what's in season, what's good, what's not good, right? Yes, and you experiment absolutely. a little yeah. bit too. There's, I mean, you know, there's specialty vendors that you have, like Accardi, for example. Um, <coughs> they have specialty Italian mm -hmm. foods. But Oscar also came in and started doing some farm to table. Yeah, local, so, local purveyors. Local, so yes. That's so, kind of cool. So we, he actually picked up bushels of mini pumpkins yeah. and he made a bunch of specials with them uh -huh. when he first came in. Yeah. Remember uh, that pumpkin, the pumpkin, pumpkin soup. Pumpkin bisque. Pop, pop, and a mini, pumpkin bisque was oh, I had that. When you, that was yeah, yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, and a mini roasted pumpkin and yeah. he took the cap off. Yes, I remember that too. Put the crust on like uh -huh. a creme brulee, you know, uh -huh. like the top we of gotta the creme brulee. We've got to remember. Delicious. You, your yeah. chef Delicious. that's there now, Oscar. Uh, his pedigree, I mean, this guy worked for the best of the best yeah, in no, the Boston yeah. metro area. Absolutely. So for him, right. he's bringing his contacts, his ideas, his, his, in his mind what yeah. he wants to produce. Yeah. Like right. the lazy man's lobster. I don't believe you had that before, did we you? We did not have that before. No. So and what he's done, so basically since he's, he's so new, we've maintained the menu as it was for now. Right thing to do. Right? And, and so we're introducing specials. And so each week he's been coming up with new specials. Pan-seared scallops, lazy lobster, chicken masala, oh. veal masala. I mean, it's, and, and, the, and the customers have been raving about his specials. Oh. So well, I love the open concept where you can watch everything that's going on yes. in the kitchen. I, yes. I, to I me, like that that's too. important. Yeah. Uh, I just love it. it it's, it's, it's so orchestrated. Everybody's, you see a lot of people running around. It's like a ballet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But it's fine-tuned. Yeah. Just like when yeah. you do your show. Yeah. I got to give a lot of credit to my kitchen staff. They've done a great job maintaining the presentation. The quality of the food has not no hiccup. changed. No hiccup at all. Mm -hmm. Wow. No hiccup. That's and, a nice transition. And, and That's the, not easy to do. And the introduction of all these new specials, sure. our customers are so excited mm -hmm. about them. Marianne, so. so how long have you been on the air now? <laughs> This is our 30th season. Our new season is airing right now. That's, and the, that's and the, incredible. And the first Honestly. show is with Joe Faro from Tuscan Brands. He l led off the series with his uh, show on how to make a classic bolognese and how, it, how to use it with a classic tagliatelle, which is the classic pasta to put with a bolognese sauce. So how, the thin, whole, how thin was it? Well... <laughs> I mean, the, he brings it up like this. I mean, the... the when the pasta went through the pasta machine, he said, now we're going to Massachusetts. I said, you know, that's my line. I said that when I did my pasta. I said, now we're going to New Jersey. You know. Anyway, so uh, he cut the pasta by hand, which was great. You know, and not, The width of it was right for the bolognese sauce. And he did a great job. You know, so, I, 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 I do have one thing I want to say. I'm looking at you, and I've known you for quite a few years now. You have. Yeah, we yeah, have. We've been yeah. together for quite a while. All right, continue, please. <laughs> you know something? When it's not about him, <laughs> I get the axe. I get That's the bum it. rush. We, I cliff, just cliff notes. I just, I just wanted to <laughs> cliff notes. Right? Oh I just wanted God. to say, Marianne, you've been on the Today Show. Yeah. yeah. You've been on QVC. Yes. Uh, Regis and Kelly. Yeah. The Sicilian uh, Corner. The Sicilian. Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart, who I love. Yeah. I can see you two together. <gasps> that's a, that's a, I have to stay in the background. <laughs> you got to stay in the background with her? <laughs> right. Yeah. There's a woman. I, I digress a little bit. But what they did to that lady was a shame. What do you the, mean? The way they, they went after her and oh, she had oh. to go to jail. Oh, yeah. You know something? She... They, yeah. Uh, don't even get me going. I, I mean, won't. they should go after Congress before they go after that. Uh. Every, anything she did, every one of us have done before. Not and she me. got caught. <laughs> I and they went after it. her. Yeah. You know, it, I, I digress. I understand. I understand. I'm not don't give word. me the rush. Don't give me this. Don't give me that. Look at our producer. <laughs> I, uh, I, I want to change this. I want to change the subject over to your uh, uh. TV husband. Oh, yes, Paul. Mm -hmm. tell, tell folks about Paul and how long you've been together, well, uh, producer and director. I, re I started my show, Channel 11, here in, in Durham. Uh, and uh, after the third season, Paul Lally arrived from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. 
he had produced Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood for I don't know how many years, and the station told him, well, guess what? Now you're going to produce this cooking show. So he had to go from <laughs> Mr. Rogers <laughs> to me. And he took I, his sweater off, did he? He took his sweater off, <laughs> and he knew nothing about cooking. He knew nothing about Italian food. Now he speaks Italian. He only wants to well, eat Well, hold pizza. on. Did he relocate? Yeah. He came from uh, Pittsburgh, where Mr. Rogers', Rogers Neighborhood right. was, was filmed, and uh, landed at the station here in Durham. And uh, I got him, and he said, okay. He said, I know nothing about food. And he says, so you're going to have to you know, teach me as we go along. But he let me be me. I, there was, like I say, there was no script. There was no say this, do that, That's move amazing. over here. That's just you, just cook, no and, I, and no you, you, you cook, and I'll follow you. And That's basically, that's how yeah. Chow has existed for the last 30 years. And his comment is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So, Marianne, you know. do you do uh, personal appearances oh, as yeah. far as cooking demos? Oh, sure. I you, do them all the time. You do? Yeah. Yeah. So people can hire you. Yeah. You come in uh, to a group of people, yes. e- either in a home or to an organization. Yes, I've done all of those. I've done, you know, surprise birthday parties for people. Oh, and, really? You know, I've done them from Italian organizations, the Lawrence Ladies Lodge, the, you know, different. Sons of Italy. The, the Dentist Association of America, you know, Sons of Italy. So, you won some international awards, haven't you? Yeah, I have, yeah. So have you ever gone into people's homes? Yes, yes, I have. I remember this one guy, he wanted me to do a surprise dinner for his wife. And he said, whatever it costs, I don't care what it is, I just want you to come, ring the doorbell. <laughs> and she comes to the door, she, and, she, and you, you just move in and into the kitchen, and you create a dinner. Well, I did, you know. And it, so, yeah, did I have you, done things. And like he that. supplied all the ingredients? Yeah, or? he went out and got all the ingredients. And, you know, and wow, I, you that's kind of neat. Huh? It was, it was. Well, remember, was, when Ellen and I, for uh, our anniversary several years ago, Chef Joe, Joey Gatto. Sure. Chef Joe, yeah. uh, he's got a, uh, a national show now, and he's on PBS, mm-hmm. WBUR, mm-hmm. called From Scratch. Yes, I've heard of that. Yeah. Yes. And he, Joe, he's a dear friend. Yeah. And he came in. Uh, Ellen was Great totally surprised. Yeah. Great person. But the problem was, <laughs> we started drinking martinis together as bad. he was cooking. Bad, <laughs> bad, 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 bad. No, bad, but it was bad. a great meal. It was a great yeah. meal. You know, yeah. uh, I'm just thinking out loud. And, in February for Valentine's Day, I'm having supper. You are? Uh, in an igloo. What? In an igloo. <laughs> yeah, and what? I'm just wondering. What? Do I dare wouldn't ask, wouldn't pray the, tell, where? Where is this igloo? At the casino, obviously. No. Oh. No. The Cliff House. Cliff House in They Maine. have an igloo? It's not a real they igloo. Have, they have igloos. You rent them. Oh, and you, it's you heated. Them it's hours. plastic. Yeah. It's outside. It's outside. Yeah. Overlooking the cliffs. And it's heated. Yeah. 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 I've seen those and before. You, they, How they, romantic they, are you, Mikey? He's going alone. Oh, you're going alone? <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking my brother. <laughs> uh, no, I, 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 oh my wouldn't God. it be nice? I would love to have you prepare a meal, but they wouldn't allow that. I no, know they wouldn't. No, they have but I'm looking chefs. forward to that. That's going to be kind of uh, something oh, different, a little out of, yeah, out out of the, the norm. Wow. Mike That's... said he's thinking about taking you, but you're going to be too busy. Yeah. Because Valentine's Week is so crazy for it you. It is. You know, Valentine's Week is busy. You know, I, we're going to take a peek behind the curtain here. And I, I, I'm totally like spacing. As a lot of people know, uh, Chrissy does a phenomenal job, as does David. Well, David's not here because David has the vid. So David is at home working from his little studio. And Looks marvelous. We can see him. Hi, David. We'll hope you're feeling better. But he's supposed to be giving me the signal how much time we have left. And I keep asking her, and she directs me to David, <laughs> which is the right thing to do. I forgot you, you could David. see him for two a minutes. Minute. Two yeah. minutes to go. Two minutes ago. Two minutes ago. Okay. Anyway, David, we hope you're feeling better. And uh, David's really taking one for the team today. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You yeah. know, coming off his, his sick bed to, yeah. to help us out. Cindy and I were talking before we went on the air, and, and you ended up getting into the conversation, Marianne, yeah. about uh, how many people went for Thanksgiving dinner yeah. at Grazzi's. Mm-hmm. We had 900 and, covers oh, in four hours. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Wow. Seating times from oh 11 to God. 3. That's, that's, that's incredible. Is, that's we unbelievable. actually do more for Mother's Day and Easter. We'll probably do closer to 1,200. We're Aye. hoping to even break that number. And you know, more, we, we're going to take a break. When we come back, I want to talk about Grazzi. You guys have really hit a home run. 
I mean, thank you. You know, you. a lot of times we go to restaurants, everybody raves about them, and it's just okay. You guys have really, I mean, you know, we know people it's, it's that have eaten there that we just right. get into a conversation. It is consistency. That's it's right. being Thank consistent. Mm -hmm. Dead on. All right, we are chatting with Marianne and Sydney. We're going to take a quick break. We come back. We're going to uh, we have one, one last segment. Talk a little bit about the book. Talk about the book signing. Mm -hmm. Remember, make your <laughs> reservations. Sunday. Hang in there. We'll be right back. Yeah. You know, Mike, Tom, and I love to go to Salisbury Beach. But we love different things and we can never agree. Tom likes the casual family style dining with great Italian cuisine, Capri Seaside Italian Grill. Me, I love the elegant romantic vibe, sea glass with the amazing view and terrific menu with prices that will make it the place you want to visit every week. Mike loves a drink in his hand and a cool ocean breeze right off the surf and the rhythms of an even cooler reggae band. We all know Mike loves Bob Marley tunes at Surfside. Who doesn't love a great show? National acts, comedy, regional favorites, and the beautiful and intimate Blue Ocean Music Hall. Lucky for us, Atlantic Hospitality is the host of all these great places, and they treat everyone like they're Mike Lamazzo. And best of all, we never have to choose. Park the car once, and all of this fun is right at your fingertips. We can have it all in the heart of Salisbury Beach. Find out about all the ways you can have a great night at Salisbury Beach at NorthShorePavilion.com. And Mike, Tom, and I will see you there. This is Tom Zappala. Located in the heart of downtown Haverhill, the Haverhill Beef Company is a full-service, old-fashioned butcher shop and meat market that continues to be a valued family tradition since 1952. Peter and Monica Carboni's Haverhill Beef offers individualized service from an outstanding selection of marinated sirloin tips, homemade sausage, marinated chicken, and thick, juicy chairman reserve steaks. Your family deserves the best, so call Peter at 978-374-4795 or visit their website at www.haverbeef.com. Hi, this is Mike, and I would like to tell you about the Deborah K. Law Offices, a firm that is focused on estate planning, probate, trust administration, and elder law issues. You will feel comfortable discussing important issues concerning both you and your loved ones, as well as having the information you need to make an informed decision about your family's future. How do I know? Because I'm a client of Dan Debrick Care. If you want to have peace of mind knowing that your loved ones are protected, call Debrick Care Law Offices today in Massachusetts, 978-686-4645, in New Hampshire, 603-894-4141. At Catadella Funeral Home, we reinvest in our business to provide your family with the best facilities. It begins with a beautifully landscaped exterior, parking for 250 vehicles, and a comfortable and inviting access to our renovated interior. Funerals can be costly, so you should review and compare plans to make sure you receive services that are fairly priced. I invite you to experience the Catadella difference in cost, facility, and service. Catadella is honoring and celebrating the lives of the people we loved, providing exceptional care since 1929. This is Cindy and Mike Kunsler, owners and operators of Four Oaks Country Club and Grazi Italian Restaurant in Drakeett, Massachusetts. Grazi Italian Restaurant is the hidden gem of the Merrimack Valley. Why is that? In addition to the spectacular views overlooking the golf course, we have an incredible new chef, Oscar Figueroa. We still have all the favorites, but Oscar has created a lot of excitement with his new specials. Scallops, see it to perfection. House-made ravioli with farm fresh local corn buttery, tender, lazy man's lobster, just to name a few. You have to come experience Grazi Italian Restaurant for yourself. Grazi Italian Restaurant, located at Four Oaks Country Club, 80 Meadow Creek Drive in Drake, Massachusetts. Hope, Hope to, to see, see you soon. soon. Okay, we are back. We are chatting with... <laughs> <laughs> Very <laughs> abrupt music. Yeah, what's up? Okay. Yeah. We're chatting with Marianne and Cindy. Question about what would be the go to vegetables that you recommend for any household in zone five over the course of a year, besides tomatoes? Mm, eggplant. Tomatoes? Hold on. I'm, eggplant. Yep. Zucchini. Peppers. Yeah. Peppers. Yeah. Those would be the big ones. Tomatoes, eggplant. Now, Zucchini, this year, peppers. we had an amazing harvest of tomatoes. Yeah, I did too. Amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, Even with a drought. Exactly. <laughs> we don't have, we have, uh, we have raised. You were, tell, you were telling me. We have two, One of our listeners yeah. brought some brought plants. Brought some plants. And, yeah. We, he, he gave me six 
tomato plants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And those six plants yielded between 500 and 900 yeah, tomatoes. Yeah, I believe it, yeah. It was unbelievable. You wow. had six tomato That's plants? We had 70. Yeah, you know what? Well, you know what? So we have, well, you know what it is? We have raised beds. Yes. And they're yeah. in a very sunny area, yeah. but we don't have a lot of room for where they are. Yeah. yeah. And I'm trying to talk Ellen. Ellen's got an herb garden, too, but uh, I'd rather have vegetables, but she likes the herbs. Marianne, you, do you get into the heritage tomatoes? Oh, we do a lot of those. Do yeah. You? Like the Costoluto Genovese. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With that tomato, the ridged tomato, which people look at it and they go, oh, well, I'm not going to buy that. It's ridged. I thought, oh, okay. Well, you know, they, if it doesn't look like a. A smooth skin better. tomato. Do they? Yeah. Oh. But you know, like heirloom tomatoes. It, it's an heirloom tomato, the Costaluto Genovese. But also, one of the tomatoes we grew this year was this one. This is the Pienolo. Is tomato. that like a plum tomato? No. This is like a huge cherry tomato, and if you look at it, you notice that it has like a the teardrop. Little nipple on the end. See it at the end? Yeah. There? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And this, when you cut into this cherry tomato, which is it's bigger than a regular cherry tomato. It's so pulpy, and with this, I did a, I froze a lot of them, I dried a lot of them, and I did a lot of blistered tomato sauce, which, you know, this is what I'm trying to tell people. If you keep the treatment simple and you have fresh ingredients, how can you go wrong? Good point. You cannot go wrong. So you take these tomatoes, you cut them in half, you have a little olive oil in a pan, you throw in a couple whole cloves of garlic, you just smash the garlic around, take it out after it's flavored the oil. You throw these half-cut tomatoes in, move them around, salt, a little more olive oil, throw in the fresh basil, you're done. You're done. You're done. None of this drive to the store. No, I Get I, a I, jar right. of ragu with all this... Yeah. Junk in it. You're right. Uh, bring it home. It costs you seven dollars, right? Come home, and what have you got? Yeah. What? I agree. Some I people agree. have Fresh to cook so with a better. recipe. Do you do you follow recipes no. to the T? I don't. I never. And I love to cook. I, know, I I've never seen you look at a recipe. No, I never cook from recipes. I only write them for people who need. A guide. Understandable. But I never cook from recipes. Hey, we, that's what we do. I mean, Ellen, we call it create a meal. Yeah. We create always a meal. different that's every time you do it. All I'll, Italians are like that. It's never, never the same. Any kind of a pasta yeah. with vegetable dish, it's never the same. That's right. But that's the way we do I it. I have some Intuition. listeners that write to us every once in a while. We'll talk about a dish, yeah. and they'll, I'll yeah. get a, a comment saying, yeah. could you send me the recipe? Right. You know, recipe. It's, it's up, up here. here. Yeah, exactly. A pinch of this, a dab of that. That's or right. Whatever you know? the case might yeah. be. Yeah. You know what we're having tonight? What? What do you have? My favorite dish. Mm. Little angel here uh -huh. with breadcrumbs. And anchovy. anchovy. Okay, that's that's a classic dish. <laughs> that's what I'm having. Just like, you know, a lot of people, you know, the most comforting pasta dish to a lot of Italians is cacio pepe. Yeah. Cacio pepe. Yeah. What have you got? Napa. Four ingredients, right? I had it at, at yeah, I'll tell you what, it's one of your you favorites. You had it at the restaurant. I did, It's right? fantastic. And now, and I've, I'm, I've eaten, I've had it in other restaurants. Yours was, yeah. and it's very simple, but it's it was delicious. Simple. Delicious. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some, some people put too much garlic in it. Some people yeah. put too much garlic. Yours, it was perfect, perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, that was served as an app for us. Mm. That was served as, but you had it as a main, main. I think you had first it. First course. As a first course, yeah. that's right. Pasta's always a first course, uh, uh, unless it's in a casserole or something. Yeah, you know. yeah. Cindy, yeah. We, uh, we open for Christmas reservations yet at the uh, uh. Grassi's? Uh, can people call up now and make oh, yes. reservations for Christmas? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Through the whole year? month of December. Absolutely. New Year's? Absolutely. Is there entertainment anywhere on Grazi's property for New Year's? No, no. Okay. Oh, this Mikey, go. Why don't oh, you bring Tom. Oh, you bring Tom. Mikey, sing. <laughs> just bring, just bring, you should hear bring Michael's these two. Michael. Yeah. Just, just the regular restaurant is open uh, this year. We do have two weddings booked on New Year's Eve this year. So mm -hmm. we have a busy night. You do. We'll yeah. have a busy yeah, night. I guess the heck you do. Do you have, like, for instance, New Year's Eve, do you offer a special menu? Same regular menu. That's smart. Regular smart menu. Move. Smart We move. have tried that in the past, but we find that customers, some customers are always disappointed that they can't get the regular dish they smart came to get. Smart move. Yeah. So we just stick with our regular menu. You know what we do? With, you, with you stay, specials. You stay home on, on New Year's Eve, I'm mm -hmm, assuming. Mm -hmm. Ellen and I do too. You know what we do? Mm. We have a wonderful dinner, mm -hmm. and then we watch the Three Stooges. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! I can't get they, Robert to go for that. They have the Three yet. Stooges marathon <laughs> on Channel Thirty Eight. We sit down after dinner and we watch the Stooges uh, for an hour. This is really stretching it. <laughs> New, Year, New Year's Eve is like amateur night now. I don't know. I, you know something? Oh, it does. It's, 
I, I enjoy just being at home, safe and sound, yeah. having a nice prime roast or something. <laughs> uh, Marianne, I'm going to ask you, you've, you've written, how many books have you written now? Do you make uh, it to midnight? I'm sorry? 14. Do you make it to 14 midnight? 14 books. <laughs> I do, sometimes. Uh, you've written 14 books. Yeah. Do you have a favorite? No. It's like asking me which kid do I like best. Really? <laughs> you know, because you know, I, I write them all. You know, I mean, it's... it's ha, a, from, from start to finish, because uh, I know, yeah. you know we both have right. written books. How long does it take you for a book project, from start to finish? Two years. Yeah, same thing yeah. with us. About two years. About two years, yeah. Yeah. I noticed, Tommy, that uh, Jasper White yes. wrote the foreword in your book. The last book. The last book. Yes. Uh, how, how close, I mean... Are you buddy buddy with yes, him? Yes, I, I love Jasper because Jasper he's is a character. He's not only he's a character, but he is one of the truest chefs I know. He doesn't have an attitude, you know. He's not a a devo, you know. He's he's he's. What do you call a male? A devo. Say again. Devo. Oh, okay. Yeah. Diva, he's, devo. He okay. loves. He has a passion for cooking, for food. He has a respect for the fish. for ingredients. He loves fish. Oh yes, he's he is the king of fish. Oh. he knows fish. You go to Summer Shack. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm, oh. I'm, Jasper, I'm good to go. And you know the thing with Jasper is what I was saying earlier, the freshest fish doesn't need much. You know, if you want a piece of grilled fish in Italy, it's going to be the whole fish, head and tail. Mm. You know, Americans are, oh, my God, the eyes, I can't take it. You know, it's, 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 they have no idea I mean, what. It, we, <laughs> in Sicily, you know, we've been to yeah. Sicily many times. I mean, uh, we, yeah. we, you walk into a, to a little yeah, restaurant, yeah. and all of the fish is outside. That's right. In on front ice. of the restaurant, on ice, mm -hmm. and as you walk in, you, you, you pick out, you pick what, out which what one you want. want. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of the chefs will do that. Yeah. And, on the island of Madeira, you're so far off the coast of Lisbon, you're off in Portugal, Yeah. The, uh, the chefs would actually go down to the pier and pick out the fish as the boats were coming in, and they yeah. would take it, Oh yes. and that would be exactly. on the menu that night. Right. That's right. I mean, you can't well, get any no, fish. You can't. But if That's... you don't like fish, and you're on the island of Madeira, don't you're going to lose some serious weight, let yeah. me tell you, because that's all there is. Right. It's unbelievable. Well, that's like Sicily, too, because you know if you look at a map, Sicily's an island, right? It's all surrounded, so, sure. You know, the fish is one of the key uh, ingredients, but people go... Swordfish. Oh. Swordfish, swordfish is, oh. is huge. Is huge. Tuna. Tuna. Tuna is big. prawns. Yeah. But don't go to Sicily and ask for a lot of meat dishes because they just, they don't exist. Don't. I mean, there's lamb. Yes, there's lamb. There's beef. Uh, you but know, even but the it, beef, the beef it's, is, it's, it's too hot. The, it, cattle, yeah. the cattle, instead of being 900 pounds, they're it, like 400. You know, it's uh, funny. Oh, uh, we have a few minutes left. The first time that I was there uh, was with uh, Tony Fiorino and a couple yep. of other guys. Yep. And we were there for the feast. You were there for the feast. We were there for the first time for the Feast of St. Alfio. Mm -hmm. And we're walking, we're walking down the street and all the vendors are there. And this guy is just cooking. And people are standing in line. He's got the meat on there. And it smells so good. I said, ah, oh, man, I want, I want one of those. Mm -hmm. Puts it in a nice piece of Italian bread. Mm -hmm. I ate the whole thing. My brother's watching me because Al lives there. Mm -hmm. I says, Al, that was fantastic. He mm. says, you do realize you just ate horse meat. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> but that's what it was. I didn't yeah. know. Yeah. But that's yeah. the you way it is. You can tenderize anything. I know, really. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the book um, specializes. There are some meat dishes in it, but the, it's... The, the vegetables cover every category right. of food. Anipasto, soups, sauces, pastas, fish, meat, vegetables, obviously, and some desserts. All right, we talked about rabi. Yes, broccoli rabi, yeah. Uh, is there a proper way? To, I mean, it, it seems so easy to, to, to cook, yeah. but if you don't cook it right... Mm. You know, you can you can use it as a as a as a rope in a rodeo. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You have to really make sure that it's cooked, not undercooked. Correct? Yes. What I do is I trim off the stems. Yeah. Then I and this, you can cook the stems if you want to use them like for a stir fry or something, but I don't. So I use use those like a soup in a, in a soup okay. a compost thing. But I take the leaves. And I do not boil them at all because, no, nope, barape is a bitter green. And people say to me, oh, I got to boil it to get out the bitterness. And I said, you know what? Guess what? Broccoli rape 
is bitter. And as I say in this book, bitter is better. Because if you boil this to death, you have eliminated every, uh, everything. Yeah. Everything. So you, you've got to be careful. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to say that this afternoon I have kale. Yeah. And what I do is I put maybe a half an yeah. inch of water That's in it. That's it. I let it steam up. Yes. Then I shut the heat right off. Yeah. And I just let leave the cover exactly. on. Exactly. you don't and then, undercook and then it. I it's key it. not to undercook. Just though. let it steam. Right. Yeah. And right. Then I take it and I'll mm -hmm. saute some garlic and some hot pepper. That's exactly mm -hmm. how I do it. Me. Oh, let what? me tell you. And if I want, I cut up a couple of tomatoes yeah. and I put it on top of some yeah. pasta. And yeah. you're good. Oh, boy. Let me tell you, sister, I'm it's a knockout. That. Can we come over? Okay. So how do you prepare the broccoli, Rob? So I've got the leaves, yep. and I, like he says, I put a, that, just film a pan, yeah. a saute Sorry. pan. Put the leaves in. I get them going. When I start to see this, the water starts to just start get little bubbles, on, I put the cover on a jar so I can allow the, um, the steam. steam to escape and not turn the broccoli gray. Right. Yeah. So once it's wilted like that, I take it out, I put in my little garlic, my olive oil, the little black your little, little red pepper, pepper flakes, move it around. It's and, and you're good. Salt, pepper, it's delicious. All right, we're just about out of time. Just one what about just one question, 30 seconds mustard greens. Yeah, what about them? Same thing? It yes, do the same. Basically the same. Same thing. Same thing with spinach. People boil spinach, don't boil it. It's 90% water. Just rinse it with the leaves and with, steam it. That's yeah, it. wilt it down in a pan. It's done. Good. Like yeah. she said, simple yeah. is good. Yeah. All right, so the name of the book is Ciao Italia, Plant, Harvest, and Cook. Sunday. Marianne will be at the Grazi, Grazi restaurant Sunday afternoon from 1, one to, to 4? 1 to one 3. 1 to 3. 1 to 3. three. We're going to have books. Yes. Are you going to have any aprons? I can bring aprons if they want me to. Yeah, sure. She'll sign the, I'll book. Sign the book. I'll tell you what, I bought three. This is a great book. This should be Christmas in every present. single kitchen. Every single kitchen. With that being said, Marianne, thank you so much. You know oh, how much we love Tommy. having you. Thank you. Thank you, thank Cindy. You. Thank Cindy, you, Mikey. Thank you so much. Our best to hubby. Thank you. And with that being said, remember, if you can't make fun of yourself, please don't make fun of anyone. Have a great week. Take care, everybody. Ciao. Ciao. Excellent. Oh, dear. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.